Athletics Now presents Athletics World Weekly 18. The Boop, a great Manchester run, is on tap as 40,000 runners take to the streets of Manchester City, UK. The outdoor season is in full swing as we check out the Samsung Diamond League meeting in Shanghai, China. The Volkswagen Prague Marathon gets a review as 10,000 running contestants cover the 42 kilometer distance in the Czech Republic capital city. The Samsung Diamond League meeting in Doha, Qatar is another of the outdoor season's major stops on the IAAF athletic schedule. And the Ostrava Golden Flag meeting featuring Usain Bolt attempting new records in the 100 meters. All of this and more on Athletics World Weekly. Private jets are the preferred method of travel for the biggest stars and celebrities in the world and the biggest star on the athletic circuit, Usain Bolt, plays by the rules of the rich and famous as he arrives private class in the Czech Republic for his first big European contest of the 2012 season. The 2012 event marks the sixth time Bolt has come to the Extrava meeting to kick off his season. Bolt is the meet record holder in the 200 meters and 300 meters and he predicted a 9-7 meet record for today to add to his collection. The first start was foul as South African Simon Magakwa hurls an obvious fly out in lane two. The 26-year-old African Championship bronze medalist in the 100 and 200 meters is in his rookie season on the international circuit. The second start was good as 37-year-old Kim Collins in lane four and Canadian Justin Warner in lane one get off to great starts. However, by 50 meters, Bolt in lane 5 takes command and stakes a solid 10.04, besting Collins' second place 10.19, but a long way off the 9.8 record set by Asafa Powell in 2008. The headwind of .08 was a factor, however, Bolt's slow start was equally credited for the slowest time in his 30 race big league career. The women's 800 meters was highly anticipated as the feature was returning 2008 Olympic champion Pamela Chilimo versus 2009 world champion Casper Semenya. Jalimo followed the pacemaker through a first 400 meters of 57.6 while Semenya dropped to the back of the pack. By 600 meters, the anticipated head-to-head -head clash of the Titans was clearly not going to happen as Jalimo was 30 meters clear of the field and would win convincingly in 158.49. Number two in the final meters was the emerging superstar Ethiopian fan to Magiso, but as the rookie Magiso starts to fade, the figure of 2009 world champ Semenya sweeps in on her late kick of the last 80 meters and takes second in 200.80 proving her early season fitness. Julimo has a tough grind ahead of her to defend her Olympic 800 meter title. Double amputee South African Oscar Pretorius was in Ostrava in search of the difficult Olympic 400 meter qualifying time of 45.03. Oscar was on a hand to face the reigning Olympic champion American LaShawn Merritt in lane 4 and indoor world champion Neris Brennis of Costa Rica in lane 5. Merritt got off to a great start as Brennis won lane 2 his right is also out quickly. Pretorius has a really bad start and looks to be out of the time mark early on but his closing speed is his grace. In lane 6, 18 year old Dominican Llewellyn Santos, unnoticed at the start, was running a great race and for a moment was in the lead. However, when they came off the final turn, it was apparent that Maris was running in another class. By the last 30 meters, Merritt was on cruise control and would win comfortably in 45.13. Santos in blue would outlast Neres in lane 4 for the second prize with the Dominican gaining his first big league podium at 45.76. Pretorius would ultimately finish in 7th place, clocking a 47.66, more than 2 seconds off the Olympic qualifying standard. The pole vault featured French superstar Renaud Levigny, who won the event with a world-leading 5.83 and then asked for the bar to be raised to 5.90, which he cleared here on this, his third jump. Renaud is the reigning indoor world champion and is perhaps France's greatest Olympic gold medal prospect. The men's 800 meters was to be a showcase for world record holder David Rudisha, who dropped out at the last minute. Now the assembled cast was fronted by the Polish 800 meter superstar Adam Zott, who was being trailed by England's current 800 meter champion, Andrew Osagi. The pacer took the first lap in a solid 50.93 with Zott and Osagi tagging along, leaving a gap on the pack. As the pacer dropped out on the backstretch, 
Zat accelerated and left Asaji, Kenyon, Abraham Rotich, and Fritchman Ali Walik to struggle for the lead pack position. Zat's burst of speed turned out to be unsustainable, and by the, the final turn, the home stretch results didn't seem as certain as they did 20 seconds ago. Zat dug in deep to maintain the lead on the closing pack as a sympathetic crowd cheered on the 23-year-old runner from Mapazno, Poland. Zat held on to win in 144 flat while Asagi takes a podium spot in 145-24 for second. Athletics now heads to Shanghai, China for the Samsung Diamond League meeting. The women's 1500 meters got off to a speedy start as the two pacemakers took the ace field through a first 400 meters of 62.83, but then pulled back on the accelerator as the next lap recorded a time of almost 66 seconds revealing a 2.08-800 meter clocking. As the two pacemakers dropped, Ginzebe Dababa inherited the lead role. She was being chased by Bitsum Lakud, Moroccan 1500-meter record holder, Helen O'Berry, indoor 3000-meter world champion, and compatriot Abiba Iragari. Dababa answers the final bell with a fierce kick and leaves all behind except Aragari, who is disposed of in the final meters as Dababa smokes the home stretch and scores a 357.77 Ethiopian national record and meet record, as well as being the fastest time in the world in almost three years. She also becomes the third Dababa of the sisters to hold a national record. The win and time also puts her in a great position to finally win an Olympic medal in the distance as Ethiopia has never won any 1500 meter medals, men or women. Asafa Powell was the star attraction in the men's 100 meters. The number two Jamaican superstar sprinter was in lane five and got a great start as did Darvis Patton of the USA in lane two. But Powell assumes command with ease as he takes the 10.02 win. Michael Rogers of the USA emerges from the pack and claims a 10.08 second place. The men's 800 meters was run in a steady rain as South African Andre Olivier in yellow had the inside lead track on the field. However, he was being challenged by Poland's Marcin Lewandowski in red and 17-year-old Kenyan Leonard Koshinja in lane two. Lewandowski paid quickly for his attempt to lead and faded badly as another Kenyan, Timothy Katoon, gunned for the podium. Olivier, a 145-2 800-meter runner, was chasing the Olympic qualifying standard of 146-2 more than the win. However, the home stretch was where both his dreams fell victim to the potent speed first of Kosentia and then Katoon. Kosentia takes the win in a modest rain damp at 146.04. Meanwhile, Olivier misses the Olympic standard. The rookie Kosentia is off to a brilliant international career. The bell lap of the men's 5000 revealed another fast race foiled by the downpouring rain. As Egos Gebrewat and Thomas Langosila left a list of names like Bekele and Shogi far behind as the 5000 meters was now a 400 meter dash. While John Kikowicz and Vincent Chepkak fought for the last podium position, Gaberwatt, another 17-year-old sensation from the Ethiopian mountains, maintained his impressive closing speed by holding off 5,000-meter Olympic finalist Lango Siwa. Gaberwatt zoomed through the last 400 meters at 54 seconds to take the win in an impressive 13-11 and claiming the rare victory of his very first Diamond League race. Bekele takes fifth in 13-13 with Augustine Shogi claiming seventh place in 13-15. But the biggest and best race of the night highlighting the biggest athletic star in China featured not Usain Bolt but the former world record holder and Shanghai homeboy Lu Shang. The 2004 Olympic gold medalist was who the audience sat through the pouring rain all night to see. The anxiety in the stadium was high as David Oliver and world champion Jason Richardson presented a formidable challenge to Lu. Even the rain has finally stopped for the race. Oliver gets a great start as does Lou. However, Oliver has a slight lead, but Lou gains momentum as Oliver hits hurdle five, dooming his chances as Lou flames to an amazing 12-9-7 win. Lou's fans got what they came to see, as Lou seems to be fully recovered from his 2008 foot injury. Again, he is China's greatest hope for an athletics gold medal. Athletics now heads to Manchester, England for the group of Great Manchester Run.
The women's elite race was given a 20 minute start before the men and the masses under ideal weather conditions. Cloudy Manchester coupled with a 52 Fahrenheit 11 degree Celsius temperature provoked thoughts of a very quick time. The women's race was marked by the presence of Britain's Mario Yamaguchi in black, Gemma Steele in red, and Charlotte Purdue stage left. Italy's Nadia Ejafini out front in white took the lead at 3 kilometers, which was clocked in 9.29. Ejafini was part of an international contingent that hosted Kenyan 10,000 meter world champion Lanat Masai and former world cross country champion Benita Willis of Australia. Meanwhile, the men's elite and mass start signaled the barrage of thousands of runners on the streets of the 2,000 year old city center. The IAAF Gold Label Road Race, which was established in 2003, attracted a record number of runners as more than 40,000 participants make this the largest 10-kilometer race in the world. At the head of this mass of athletics for the fifth time is four-time winner of this race, Haile Gabriel Selassie. Gab is being tracked by Ethiopian Ayele Abishero, who has been named to the Ethiopian Olympic Marathon squad on the strength of his 204 Dubai Marathon win. While Haile has been left off the Olympic team thus far and is running today with the hope of making the 10,000 meter team. Back on the women's side, Lynette Masai leads a quick pace of ladies through a halfway or 5 kilometer split of 1547, putting her on a solid 3134 finishing time. Fast, but 27 seconds off the 3107 2006 course record set by Bahani Adia. The men's race free race expectations plans were thrown to the winds of the northern British city as the fastest marathoner in the world and the number four of all time as well as the Olympic bronze medalist in the 10,000 meters have all been left in the wake of Gabriel Selassie. Maybe they can run safe knowing they have been selected to the team and Gabe still has something to prove to the selectors if he wants to make his fifth Olympic team. Back on the women's front, Masai, true to form, cruises into the final meters well clear of Ejafini in second. Masai never faltered as she takes the win right on schedule in 31-34. Ejafini put up a brave race and tried to make up lost territory at the end but couldn't catch the Kenyan as she finishes in 31-52. During the final meters, Gabriel Selassie entered the city center on cruise control, taking the win in a world leading 27-39 great, but ultimately it did not earn him a spot on the team. Behind him, Kabedi and Ashero struggled for second right to the finish, with Kabedi notching a personal best of 27-56. Athletics World Weekly now reviews the opening Samsung Diamond League meeting in Doha, Qatar. The women's 800 meters kicked off the outdoor season with a 57-6-3 first lap as Indian national record holder Tentu Luka and reigning Olympic gold medalist Pamela Jalimo led the pack. The Luka fell off as Jalimo looked as though she was taking the lead for good, but Ethiopian Fantu Magiso tracked her every step and made a dramatic move to pass her on the back stretch. Jalimo let the rookie burn her jets as the crowd held its breath anticipating a major upset. The Olympic champ reached into her bag of tricks and pulled out a grinding sustained injection of pace that the up-and-coming Ethiopian tried but just couldn't handle. Jalimo scores a big 156-4 world leading time. But the real story here is the heretofore unheralded Magiso, who is now Ethiopian national record holder in the 800 with her impressive second place 157.9. The season 800 meter kickoff produced seven sub two minute finishes. Wow. The men's 100 meter dash offered a complex set of plots and subplots as 2004 100 meter Olympic gold medalist Justin Gatlin in lane five was facing former world record holder Asafa Powell in lane four. Powell gets a powerful start, but Clark in lane 6 is out quickly as well. But Clark fades as Gatlin emerges from the pack to nip the Jamaican at the tape by 1 100th of a second in 9.87, third fastest time of the season, while Clark takes third in 9.99. The subplot features Gatlin. On the rebound from his second drug suspension, he has made tremendous improvements since his dubious return to the big leagues as exemplified here as he out sprints in grand fashion one of the Jamaica's big three of both Blake and Powell.
The men's 800 meters featured world champion and world record holder David Ndisha in the usual routine of champion of the backstretch. The only question is what world leading time he will produce and what other runners will hang on for a personal best. In Doha, the other runner was Kenyan Joe Kinyor, who was pulled along to a personal best of 143.76, while Rudisha scored a fabulous 143.10 win. Rudisha, son of a world class 100 meter runner and 400 meter hurdler mother, in my estimation, is the only sure thing for Olympic gold, and that includes both. The women's 100 meters was packed with one gold and two silver Olympic medalists, plus 200 meter world champion American Felix dropping down a distance. Blessing Akbar gets out best, but is quickly caught by Felix. Frazier is gaining, but here comes Brown, but not enough, as Felix takes it in 10.92, a meet record, personal best, and major upset. The replay shows Felix out to a commanding lead as Brown is gaining quickly, but perhaps misjudges the finish. Felix is now a serious 100 meter threat. The last lap of the men's 1500 meters featured the unmistakably tall figure of Olympic champion Asbo Kiprop moving into position to take the lead from world champion silver medalist Silas Kiplagat. Kiplagat surrenders the lead on the back stretch as the sizzling splits a 55 4 1 for 400 meters and 152 flat for 800, indicating a seriously fast race. But despite the fast pace, Kiprop's hands were full as he had to shut down not only Kiplagat but a pack of Kenyan compatriots and one Ethiopian in pursuit of victory. But coming off the backstretch is where the race is decided as Kiprop stumbles allowing Kiplagat to gain the momentum. Kiprop bravely recovers and goes into top gear to regain his prized position. As Kiprop attacks the home stretch, Kiplagat protects his lead by gently drifting in right into lane two, blocking Kip but ensuring the win. 329-63, fantastic time and great drama. Apparently no hard feeling from Kip Rock about Kip Lagat. They will meet a few more times over the season and in the London Olympics. South Africa's Olympic silver medalist Godfrey Malkina propels himself into first place with this disappointing but leading third round 798 or 26 foot 2 inch jump. The last jump of the night for indoor bronze medalist Alexander Minkov turned out to be all that was needed as Minkov hits 822 or 26 foot 11 inch. A cautious foot placement because of two earlier fouls found Minkov leaving 27 feet on the boards. But the Russian will gladly take the win. South American triple jump record holder Key Lacosta of Brazil soared into the lead position with his season best 1431 TJ. The 29 year old Costa broke into the international ranks in 2010 with a World Indoor Championships bronze medal finish. Meanwhile, triple jump favorite world champ silver medalist Olga Ripakova was left to pull a rabbit out of the hat with something special. The rabbit turned out to be a 1433 or 47 feet 11 inch leap which secured the victory. Ripakova placed fourth in the 2008 Olympics. The women's 3,000 meters with 100 meters to go was still too close to call as double world 5,000 and 10,000 meter champion Vivian Chiriu was locked in a home stretch struggle with former Olympic 5,000 champion Mesera Defar. As the pair sprint away in the final meters, Vivian manages to hold off the hard charging Ethiopian to record at 8.46.44. This is the kind of sprint finish former world record holder Defar used to never lose. But today, the tables have been turned on the Ethiopian by the Kenyan. Athletics now heads to Prague, capital city of the Czech Republic for the Volkswagen Prague Marathon. The 9 a.m. Old Town Square race start is launched on a perfect, for running that is, 10 degrees Celsius day with no noticeable signs of wind. The race first held in 1996 has grown rapidly in size and quality as the IAAF Gold Label Marathon finish line is now the goal for almost 10,000 runners. As is the course record of 205.39 by Ethiopian Deressa Chimsa. 
After turning over a 102-54 split at the half, hopes were high that the record would fall, but Teresa fell off the pace in the last 15 kilometers as he ran solo. Despite no record, he collects a winning time of 2.06.25, about a minute off his personal best of 2.05.42 in Dubai. Second place was scored by Kenyan Stefan Term in a personal best of 2.07.16.